in the Quran, when Mary, the mother of Jesus, as she became pregnant, as she brought the baby out, so she was a virgin, the Quran agrees with that. As she brought the baby out, she was really fearful. And because, you know, she knew that people may accuse her. So when she brought the baby to her people, they started to accuse her. You know, oh Mary, how can you do such a nasty thing? You know, fornication, incest, immorality. They started to accuse her. There were no DNA tests that time, right? How can she prove that she was a virgin? God did a miracle. No one would believe her. What she did was, she remained silent. She pointed to the baby. And baby Jesus, he started to speak. He started to speak. So this is narrated in chapter number 19 of the Quran, verse number 30 and 31, and more verses, you know, back and forth. And Jesus said, the very first thing, he was like a few days old baby, he spoke and he said, that I am a servant of God. God made me into a prophet and he has sent me a book and I am supposed to be good to my mother, keep up with the prayer and give charity. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillahilladzi arsala rasulahu bilhuda wa dinil haq Diuzhirhu ala dini kulihi wa kafa billahi syahida Ashadu ala ilahi illallah wahdahu la syarika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu la nabiya ba'da Berjumpa lagi dengan channel saya Mars Tehno Saya doakan semoga semua sahabat dalam keadaan sehat selalu Pada video kali ini kami akan menampilkan bagaimana usaha dakwah seorang Sabel Ahmad. Beliau adalah salah seorang murid dari Dr. Zakir Naik yang memang reputasinya sudah tidak kita ragukan lagi. Pada kesempatan ini beliau menerima para senior dari jamaat gereja dan salah satunya adalah seorang teolog dan menjawab pertanyaan dari mereka. Nah sahabat. Mari kita saksikan saja video selengkapnya dan saya akan sedikit mereaksinya. So we say the Quran says in chapter 2 verse number 286 to be exact, personal accountability. That means whatever that we do, that's what we are responsible in the eyes of God. So you may be asking the next question, how is a person's sins forgiven in Islam? Five quick points. Point number one is the person has to acknowledge that they have committed the sin. You know, I mean, God already knows it, but the person has to acknowledge, number one. Then the person has to sincerely repent to the Creator. You know, I have a eight-year-old, if they make any mistakes and if they say sorry, you know that they are sincere or they just want to avoid something, right? We know it. So God knows sincerity. So the person has to be sincere, point number two. Point number three is, for forgiveness, uh, the person has to directly uh, appeal to the creator there is no confession of sins in a box where the imam is sitting no we, our confession has to be directly to the creator and we we don't go through any mediator not through muhammad peace be upon him not through jesus not through saints dead or alive because we know that god is uh, all knowing and god is all hearing number four is we need to make a sincere commitment not to make that sin again that's important. And number four, just to compensate for that sin, do something extra. Help out more people, donate more things. So these are the five step process for a person's sins to be forgiven. And Allah says in the Quran that, oh you who believe, do not despair the mercy of Allah, mercy of God. He is willing to forgive all the sins. But then chapter four, verse number 116 says, that God can forgive all the sins of all of humanity, but there is only one unpardonable sin in Islam. Which one do you think it is? Shirk, sure. sure, yes, which is associating partners with God. Saying that, you know what, okay, fine, there is God, but this human is God, uh, this animal is God, or, or this creation is God. If a person attaches partners with God and dies like that, then that's the only unpardonable sin in Islam. So that's what Islam says about sin, right? And lastly, I think you mentioned about uh, that Jesus was the Messiah, right? Jesus is mentioned 25 times in the Quran and many, many places attached to him, his name is that Jesus, the Messiah. So we believe that he was the Messiah. But Messiah, both in the dictionary, it is not analogous, it's not uh, synonymous with God, son of God or divine. Messiah only means anointed. 
anyone who is anointed is called as the Messiah uh, even the king of Cyrus in uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse number 1 he is called as the Messiah so there are many people in the Old Testament New Testament all over the, they're called, they have been anointed Messiah right but Messiah is a title that God gave to Jesus because God anointed Jesus peace be upon him he's a mighty prophet he did many miracles you know some of the miracles which are not there in the Bible about him is there in the Quran you guys want to know at least one or two yes you know so the very first miracle according to the Bible is that Jesus turned water into wine right however in the Quran when Mary the mother of Jesus as she became pregnant as she brought the baby out so she was a virgin the Quran agrees with that as she brought the baby out she was really fearful and because you know she knew that people may accuse her so when she brought the baby to her people they started to accuse her you know oh Mary how can you do such a nasty thing you know fornication incest immorality they started to accuse her there were no DNA tests at that time right how can she prove that she was a virgin God did a miracle no one would believe her what she did was she remained silent she pointed to the baby and baby Jesus he started to speak he started to speak so this is narrated in chapter number 19 of the Quran verse number 30 and 31 and more verses you know back and forth and Jesus said the very first thing he was like a few days old baby he spoke and he said that I am a servant of God God made me into a prophet and he has sent me a book and I am supposed to be good to my mother keep up with the prayer and give charity so he claimed the prophethood and he said I am a messenger to the people and he said I am a slave a servant of God worshipping the creator one more miracle not mentioned in the Bible but mentioned in the Quran chapter number 3 verse number 49 it says that Jesus used to make birds of clay and he used to breathe into them and by miracle of God they used to fly off he used to raise people from the dead give eyesight to the blind the lepers and the people who are sick uh, but every single time a miracle of Jesus is mentioned God says in there by the power of God by the permission of God just to make sure people don't start worshipping Jesus because the power is coming not from Jesus but from the creator even the Bible mentions this John chapter 5 verse number 30 says the fourth gospel in the New Testament Jesus is saying that I of myself I cannot do anything whatever I hear I judge my judgment is true I seek not my own will but the will of God who sent me so we say that he's a mighty prophet a mighty messenger and lastly his message was the message of oneness of God the Bible says this right in Mark chapter number 12 verse number 28 a person came to Jesus and he asked him a million dollar question that of all the commandments the Jewish people used to have 613 commandments to be exact and the person wants to know of all the commandments which one is the first the greatest of all of them and Jesus he replied in verse number 29 the Shema hear O Israel the Lord our God his only one worship him with all your heart mind soul and strength and that is the first commandment and the same thing is mentioned in the Quran chapter 3 verse number 51 God is Quran is quoting Jesus and is saying Jesus said that verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord worship him alone and that is the straight path so we hope and pray that we all follow Jesus we love Jesus and we follow his commandments of one God penjelasan yang sangat lugas dan masuk akal dari dokter Sabel Ahmad beliau menjelaskan dasar-dasar pertaubatan dalam agama Islam memang ada jauh perbedaan antara Islam dan Kristen jika dalam Islam kita bertobat langsung kepada Allah yang Maha Kuasa tidak melalui perantara baik itu Nabi Muhammad ataupun lewat ulama atau wali-wali yang ada sekarang dan kita juga harus melaksanakan tobat nasuha langsung pada Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tidak melalui penebusan dosa yang selama ini dilakukan oleh umat Kristen 
Dalam kesempatan ini, Dr. Sabel Ahmad juga menjelaskan hanya satu dosa yang tidak diampuni dalam agama Islam. Audien sempat ditanya dan ternyata ada yang mengetahui bahwa dosa syirik yaitu menyekutukan Tuhan atau menyekutukan Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Kita menyembah selain daripadanya. Syirik ini sangat dilarang dalam Islam karena Allah tidak akan mengampuninya. Di kesempatan yang sama, Sabel Ahmad juga menjelaskan bagaimana mukjizat yang hanya ada dalam Al-Qur'an tetapi tidak ada di perjanjian lama ataupun di perjanjian baru yaitu mukjizat Nabi Isa atau Yesus dapat berbicara saat bayi yaitu membela ibundanya Siti Maryam dalam tuduhan orang-orang Yahudi bahwa dia telah berbuat cabul bagaimana mungkin seorang yang soleh keturunan Bani Israel berbuat cabul namun Allah menurunkan mukjizat bahwasanya Yesus kecil dapat berbicara dan membela ibunya tentu ini tidak akan dapat diterima oleh orang-orang Kristen yang tidak open-minded mereka mengatakan itu adalah dalil Al-Quran tetapi untuk orang-orang Amerika yang open-minded ini mungkin bisa diterima oleh akal mereka nah sahabat mungkin itu saja sedikit reaksi dari saya mudah-mudahan video ini bermanfaat bagi kita semua wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh